Many of the activities in the following program are extremely dangerous and must only be carried out under expert supervision. Please don't attempt any of them yourself. Every year I challenge 10 kids from across the UK to live off their wit, survive off the land for 12 days. No phone, no text, no social media. This year's going to be harder tougher, faster than ever before. We're all doing this, OK? <laughs> Stand up tall now. Die. The meat is no good, <laughs> but the maggots oh, are. No. Oh, something she's brought me to do. Let's bring you up, last push. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> On Bear grills and this. It's survival school. This week... I can't. What Scott, like please, I'm begging you. ...students please. face some serious trust issues. Get close up with a deadly, creepy crawly... No. <gasps> ...and get down and dirty. Where's my mouth? I can't even move at all. Time to wake him up. Up it's day three of survival school. Come on, up and with two testing days behind them, the young survivors are exhausted. Come on. But at my school, there's no rest for the wicked. And instructor Tim is taking no prisoners. Let's start the day. That was really mean. She wakes up. Okay, soon you've got your mess tins. So you got porridge here. An average 12-year-old needs as much as 2,000 calories per day. This porridge is exactly the start they'll need to get through what I've got planned for them. One of the most important things in the wild that these young survivors can train and develop is trust. And today's task is going to test that trust to the limit. They've got abseil in pairs, down this huge vertical wolf. One is going to control the descent of the other. If they can develop that trust, develop that teamwork. But for all of them today, there will be fear. Trust, when it's tested, is always hard. Dear, 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 dear. First night in a new home. What a mess. Back at camp, instructor Tim is unimpressed by the lack of discipline the team have. As they yeah, begin they breakfast, go. Callum has no mess tin. You don't have a mess tin? No. Tim makes it clear it's yeah. everyone's responsibility to keep camp clean and their equipment in order. Guys, you really need to take care of your kit. Come on. You need to find it. Come on, Callum, have a little look. That's it. Check down by the river. I haven't been down by the river. Really Failure to find his mess tin, Callum draws a short straw and must eat from the camp spoon. And you can eat out of the big spoon, okay, buddy? But that's There's not the time. only mistake Callum's <laughs> made. He's lost something else vital to the day ahead. You have to find your mountain boots. You can't lose it. Boots, lose your boots, okay? That's so crucial. A lot of the kids are just neglecting their equipment. They leave it lying around, they forget where things are. You can get away with that at home, but out here, if you leave an essential piece of gear behind, like medicine, radio, satellite phone, knife, water bottle, you and your team can be in real trouble. Here. Oh, remember where you put your things, OK? Take care. Take care of your boots. And now take care of you. You have to have wet boots today. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Right from the get-go, it's crucial the students get to grips with knots and understand how essential that ropes can be in every survival scenario. By the end of the 12 days, the students will be tying their own climbing ropes, so need to prove to instructor Scott that they're learning. Right, listen in. I'm going to show you a knot, and you're going to do the knot. So all we've got to do is tie the reef knot. Use the tying two pieces of rope of the same size together, and it's important. Watch. A reef knot is simply left over right, then right over left. And to ramp up the competition is boys versus girls. 
Set your knot out, hold it up here. Go. 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it there. Hold it there. Oh dear. That is not a reef knot. That is not a reef knot. That is not a reef knot. That is a reef knot. One. That is not a reef knot. Callum. No. 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 And John. No. Which means the girls have won. Yeah. I was so surprised that I was the only one that got it. I thought that like maybe some of the boys would get it. But I was like really, I'm actually kind of proud of myself. Being thrown in the deep end at survival school isn't the first time 13-year-old Abigail's had to cope with a new environment. Originally from Chicago, she's just getting used to a new life in Scotland and hopes her ability to adapt will help her. Living in America was extremely busy and so much fun. And living in Scotland is like not so busy. I mean, it's still fun, but it's like a different kind of fun. I love gymnastics and I love dancing and I like makeup as well and I like to paint my nails a lot. So I guess it, that would be girly. Having signed up to build her confidence, she's the first to admit her survival skills are limited. I've watched The Hunger Games, so it's got some survival stuff in there. Three days in and a disappointing nine out of 10 students have failed the task. Not a good start. So you look at someone like Abigail and you think she's just a girly girl, but actually she's got this real streak of inner steel. She's tough, she's resilient, she's committed. I can only hope the team fare better in their next exercise. To succeed, they'll need to display total trust in those around them, a must have in every survivor's armory. So today's about trust. You'll be working together as a team putting your, your lives in each other's hands, if you like. Look at the big wall, vertical, high and dangerous. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down that wall. It's a bit of a rescue scenario, really. Imagine this. You're out on Everest. You're there climbing in a group of three. Kellum is injured. He's broken his leg. You are going to abseil. You've got to carry him and you. So, Josh, out you come, kneel down here. Hands on the, like this, looking up the rock face. And if you should slip, back, you just drop your weight. You've got them both. Can you imagine if these fail? That's it, it's over. Don't say that. This early on, it's clear the students must build their trust in one another. First to voice his worry is youngest team member Callum. I don't like how we don't we're not a, a, the safety rope isn't controlled by like the adults are controlled by like other kids. I'm gonna do boss on me. I'm going to do really well. You're going to do fantastic. Given the scale of the challenge ahead of them, I'm reassured to see Callum's teammates offering him the support he needs. As they climb, the students begin to get a sense of the challenge in front of them. They're in an area of North Wales famous for its slate quarries. Razor sharp edges, slippery rocks. Careful on here, guys. Try not to knock anything down on anyone else. This place is not for the faint-hearted. To encourage each other over the edge, they're going to need complete confidence in their schoolmates. With the girls ahead in the knot-tying task, the boys need to prove themselves during the abseil. John seems to be looking forward to leading Ash down the wall. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Okay, you must be brave and trust each other. Ash looks distinctly less happy. Let it slide through your hands. Lean. That, that will move. I can't lean. You've got to do it. I He's going to go. On, He's going to go. I can't lean. No, I'm not. You can. Off you go. One, two, three. You can do it. It's OK, Ash. Ash is getting plenty of encouragement from Josh and Lauren on the brake lines. But the only person who's going to convince him down the wall is rescue buddy John. Uh, if he goes, you've got to go. No, no. Nothing's going to happen. I promise you. Just all the emotions building up, Ash, you'll be all right. This is exactly what it's about. You've got to go together as a team. You've got to trust him. It's the only way, Ashley. Despite John's reassurance, it's clear Ashley's not ready to trust him. 
So if you stand at a vertical rock face like this, you're not human if you don't feel fear. Fear is natural. Your body gives it to sharpen your senses. But it doesn't work when the fear starts to control you. Let's no, see. I can't. I can't here. do it, John. Keep your hands here, John. They just lean together backwards. I can't do just it. Just slide through. Here we go. I can't do it. This is so high, though, and you're letting me down. Depends what, mate. I'm not going to let you down. Well, actually, I'm letting you down, but I'm not going to let you down that way. With Ash having doubts in his teammate, Scott calls a halt to their abseil. OK, guys, just step forward here. And pulls the boys from the edge. That's it. It's not the start I was looking for. All right, Ash. John is left alone at the top. OK. I didn't want to do the abseil. I don't think I'm going to have to learn to trust him, because I do trust him, but like, not like that, not all my life. So the boys are struggling a little bit. Do you think you can do this? Yeah. Yeah, we can do it. Back. First up for the girls is Ruby and Abigail, with Abigail on the control rope. Keep going. Oh. Just let this slide through your hands, Alex. Can't people I do this for fun. Move. Start stepping down as soon as you get back next to Abby. Come on. I can't move, though. You have to move with her. I'm trying. OK, let's go. Let's start getting back. Look. No, back. she's pulling. I can't it's move. It's fine. It's fine. It's perfect. But you're in the perfect position. Abby, alongside her. It's a shaky start for the girls. Yeah. Keep leaning back. No. Keep leaning back. Ruby, I got you. Ruby is clearly terrified. I'm going to fall. You won't fall. Lean I'm back. Gonna fall. But with some all-important reassurance from Abigail, Ruby begins to trust her partner and herself. That's it. That's it. All the way down. That's it. Leg up here. Boy. Do you trust me? Yeah. I trust you now. I'm calm. Look downwards. I'm not even going to bother looking down. First blood to the girls. Oh. It's a step in the right direction for them as a team. Oh. That was quite scary at the start, especially the bit when we were going over. Mm -hmm. But it was quite cool. Mm. When you trust people, you develop bonds with them. And where there's bonds, there's always strength. The hardest things require the most work, and trust is definitely one of them. After one fail and one oh, successful attempt, there's clearly a split in the ranks. I, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I would do it, it's just that I, I'm not in control. Yeah. At the top of the wall, trust issues are bubbling away too. You can't do this. No, you can't. You have to think about how proud your mum's going to be if she sees that you're doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? OK? You going to try it? Oh, I have no choice, I can't go down now. Stop crying, then. Stop crying. But I need you, you know what I mean? Because I can't go down on my own. Jasmine does her best to reassure Eugenie she can trust in her. Once you've done that edge... But next to go is Callum and Jamie. For young Jamie, the wall represents his greatest fear. The quicker you do it, the better, believe me. Climbers do this, they hover around, they're scared. I know, I've done it. The longer I stay, it's not really going to get any better. So, do it. Bang! Jamie lives near Glasgow with his mum, dad, brothers and dog Vinny. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. You nearly packed? Yeah. The thing I'm most afraid of is heights. That, that's my absolute number one fear. My legs start to feel shaky and then I feel like I'm just going to collapse. A keen boxer, he's used to rolling with the punches. I enjoy boxing as much as I do eating chocolate eclairs. If I get knocked down in survival school, I'll pick myself up just like in boxing. After a terrifying start in the forward abseil, oh, Jamie is working hard to conquer his fear. I can't get any further. I can't. You can. I can. But it's Callum who's not yet sure he can trust his schoolmates. His hesitation on the edge has knocked his nerve. Callum, you don't need to look. Look at that rock right in front of you. See that? Just take steps back. No, no, I'm not doing it. Oh. OK, let's step down here then. Come down here, Callum. Jamie's saved by the bell as Callum refuses to take the leap of faith. Come this way, come here, big boy. Don't worry, well done. I was supposed to be coming down with Jamie, but I just couldn't do it. Um, I was just so nervous. With only Ruby and Abigail successful on the wall, this task has highlighted just how fragile trust is between the new teammates. Next up is Jasmine and Eugenie. I don't feel confident with this arm on the road. Okay, you're good. You, you put your arm around if you want. 
No. OK. Inch at a time. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I've got to fall just Let's put go. your foot Keep down. Going. And tension between the pair flares. Jeannie, I'm fine. slipping. I'm slipping too. Lean back. Eugenie's fear yeah. is catching. Oh, gee. As the pair's relationship becomes strained. You can do it. I can't. What Scott, please, I'm begging you, please. Yeah. For Eugenie, the fear is just too great. Do this. OK, that'll do is come back up here. What am I going to do? <laughs> Okay, relax there, relax there. <laughs> I'm know, sorry, I Jasmine. Know you're sorry. It's another bust, and Jasmine's clearly disappointed she's not earned Eugenie's trust. Back on solid ground now. It's a hard thing to do. For Jamie, it's a second attempt to conquer his crippling fear of heights. Remember what we're doing? Heels over like John is. That's perfect, John. In order not to be beaten, he must take control of his fear and the rope that will assist John in his safe descent. That's the one. That's okay. You hold on to this. Nerves okay? make for an unsteady start. But one step at a time, okay, he go. becomes master of his fear. As he reaches the bottom of this towering wall, Jamie smashes a huge personal goal. Um, that was amazing. After we got off that ledge, it was easy. With Lauren in charge and Jasmine getting her chance by her side, the duo make a speedy descent down the wall. Oh, that's it. Put your leg there. Okay. Yeah, so and then... Great, I find you. Having conquered his fear, Jamie steps up again to give Josh his chance to abseil. And after everything, almost looked like they enjoyed it. Love there. Every moment, so couldn't wait to get my hands up. Yeah, definitely. It was good trust between us. With the abseil over, seven of the ten survival school students have taken that important leap of faith and trusted completely in their partner. Before the team head back to camp, I've got one more surprise for them. I'm preparing them for whatever the wild could throw at them. If they were surviving a real jungle, there'd be plenty of what I'm about to show them to keep them company. OK, come and gather around so where you can see. I'm going to introduce you to the tarantula. No! <gasps> Tarantulas are nighttime hunters who pounce on their prey. Their diet consists mainly of crickets, grasshoppers, and beetles. But the larger species can munch through lizards, birds, and even snakes. In the morning, when you put on your boots, every day, you tip them upside down and you give them a shake. Because if you put your foot in and one of these guys is inside and you're in the jungle, you're in trouble. But for Ash, it's not just a fear of finding one in his boots. He's terrified by my arachnid friend. OK, we're going to help you actually get over this, all right? So put your hand out. OK, anticipate it's going to feel weird when it walks across it. Do not remove your hand, OK? Do not remove your hand. Trusting yourself to keep calm is essential. Well done. Keep your calm, keep your calm. It's right clear and gone. Well done, you, OK? Conquered that fear. Nice, good for you. Ash may have struggled on the slate wall, but I'm so proud that he's faced his fear of spiders and the team are growing more confident in their surroundings. After an adrenaline fueled day, the students trek to camp. At this point in the expedition, I'm giving them the bare essentials, broth with vegetables. But if the students want to find better food and survive in the wild, you mean it? Because I'm hungry. They'll need to learn an essential survival lesson. How to blend in with their environment. Why don't we blend in with the background very well? Why? Because we're not green. We're not green? What else? We're not unfollowed. You're right. OK, so animals, they roam around in the trees, in the grass, and they're camouflaged because they don't want to be hunted and they're trying to hunt. Right? The other thing is, they smell of the outdoors, as you would. We don't. What do we smell of? After shaving, do you After shave. Deodorant. The trouble is, out here, OK, we've got to try and blend in because we want to move unnoticed. And we won't do it smelling like humans. Go, come on. Oh, I don't want these to make us go into the water. I don't want to OK, look this way. The trouble is, look, this stuff stinks. It's horrible, muddy and dirty. OK, so what we can do, simple. Oh, yes! Oh, I'm loving that. The girls should do the boys. Oh. Then... And then the boys do the girls. Oh, no. Girls, mud up. Ah. Get it on there, get loads. No. No. Get loads. Don't go 
Get the boys! Get the boys! Get the boys! Ding! Spike egg! Okay, boys, get the girls! Camouflage is a survival tool. Getting spotted by a predator can mean you get eaten. But the mud doesn't just make them difficult to be detected by other animals. It's a great sunblock and will protect them from bug bites. Hiding in the wild isn't just about camouflage. Nice and low. You don't need to You've got to move like an animal too. Not too bad. Hold it there, So Scott Hold teaches it a team how to commute wild style with a monkey crawl and a snake slither. Good technique. As the kids get down and dirty, they'll learn to move as hunters, which will help them sneak up on animals. After a day on the edge, Scott knows just how to rebuild some all-important morale. Mark five! Oh, 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 I can't even move at all. OK, yeah, stop there, stop. Everyone out you come. Back to camp, oh, off, let's go. With the night sweeping in, it's time to assess how the boys' and girls' teams have performed on day three. Well, here we are, look. End of day three. So a tough day, all about trust. Sarah, what impressed you most? Um, for the boys' side, I think, Jamie, on the first day you were absolutely petrified of heights and today you were so, so strong and so brave at the top of that abseil. You even did it twice. A huge amount of courage from you and a massive leap in your fear of heights already. OK, so it was tough. Big abseil on Ash. You had a couple of goes at doing it and you were quietly confident, but you struggled. I was scared because I wasn't in control. Do you know what? There's nothing wrong with being scared. Nothing wrong with being scared at all. You've got to just build confidence. So that's it. Tough challenges, all about trust. There can be only one winning team. Today, it was the girls' team. Yeah! Come on! Oh, Tomorrow on. is another day, though, boys, and you're behind now. And you've got to play catch-up. With the girls triumphant, it seems they're quickly getting used to the wild. Even the facilities. Right, and there's our toilet. That's it. And it stinks so bad. <laughs> right, I'm going in now. Hold your breath. And what do all girls do in the toilet? Gossip, of course. He's got a really big crush. So <laughs> he will no, not leave her alone. Like, I don't have a crush on him. He has a crush on me. He will not leave you alone. Jamie, it's uh -huh. Jamie. So that's a, that's the gossip. And as for the boys. What? Do you reckon Jazz likes me? That's on camera. That's fine. <laughs> she doesn't like you. I don't think she likes you. No. What? Next time on Survival School, the teams have a mountain to climb. Go! Go, 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 go! I don't even know where we're going. The boys are on the up. Yes, 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 yes. And Ruby breaks down. I'm going to fall. There's nowhere to put my foot. Come on, let's go.